capsules for a series of uh, concerts. And I got a telephone call from my management in England. shook the globe since 1950 2022. Yupi Rama died on the 22nd of June 2022. He was a Ugandan of course, truly by origin, Luo by ethnicity. In 1997, after the murder of his father, Ernayo Wilson Oriama, who was a cabinet minister in the government of Idi Amin, he began his life in exile at the age of 24 and at the height of Amin's brutal power. Oriama was smuggled out of the country in the trunk of a car, you know how it. Yuki Rema was born in Soroti, in Tesolan, in 1953, on the 16th of April. So he died on the 22nd of June 2018, age 65, in Paris, France. His occupation is music, and genus is world music or Afro pop rock. Years he has been active is 1990 to 2018, and his official website is com. So he sang in the languages of his youth, Swahili, and actually the languages of his lost country, the clear green land of Uganda, and he also sang in English and French. So he was a multilinguistic man. Orema Han is music international reputation on the release of his second album, Beat the Border. He had collaborated with Peter Gabriel and Brian Eno and others and was backed by French musicians including Jean Pierre Hallahan, a guitarist, and Patrick Butchman, drum, Parkinson's backing vocal, touring the Walmart in Australia, the USA, Japan, Brazil, and Europe. In 1994, the band performed at Woodstock 94, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the legendary first. Gabriel's record label, Real World, Real World, helped with the first three of Urema's album before his move, Sony International. Oh, yes, no, actually who was under Sony International record label, you know, <laughs> alongside Michael Jackson, Tupac Shaku and the rest. Now you know he's a great guy. Your blood, the mix say, was me say too strong to be defeated. The label established in France where Oriama had lived since his exile. In July 2005, he performed at Life 8 Africa Calling Concert in Cornwall and with one giant leap at the Life 8 Edinburgh concert. He resided in Paris, France until his death. The capital city of France. His ashes were delivered to Anara in his land. Of Anara, we had hope in a bigger, bigger. Tell you, tell you, where are your narrow tara? Bigger we tell you, good luck. May his soul rest in peace as we recognize his legendary status and God bless all the people from Anara, God bless all the Chuli, Luo and the Kabulan continent at large. Welcome to the Luo Hall of Fame, Chief Uriyama, the son of Erenayo Uriyama. Great respect. Bye bye. started in March this year. Um, I was in Brussels for a series of uh, concerts. And I got a telephone call from my management in England um, that Faisal contacted them and he thought of me for this event. And my heart went just boom, boom, I see. Because it, it's, I left, when I left the country, it was, under a very different circumstance, fear. And all these years I kept saying, should I go, should I stay, should I go, should I stay, should I go, should I, um, because I didn't want to become a refugee for a second time. And it took me a couple of days, it took me three days to really uh, make up my mind and 
people around me were pushing me and said, you should, you should go. It's time, you know. And yeah, that's, and yeah, that's how it all started. Well, um, after the assassination of my dad, um, the whole family, we were all under house arrest. So you can imagine how difficult it was. Uh, we couldn't even move out, we couldn't go to restaurants. We, we were just, every time, you know, there was state research uh, surrounding us and I had to escape. Because if, if I didn't, in fact, the plan was to kill all the boys. That's why we all left. And I wouldn't be talking to you today if I had stayed. Um, those guys were just barbarians. And it, it took me over 10 years to overcome. Um, because obviously, you know, my father along with other people were accused of, you know, overthrowing Amin and I remember in 1968, I was uh, 15, Amin uh, came to our home one afternoon, all of us were there and we had tea and everything and before he left he pointed at us, he pointed at us and jokingly he said one day i will come and bombard this place and he did it in 1971 on the 25th we were living in Macasero, just um, near the there's the then state house about it was still in power. He bombed, but luckily enough, we had left the night before. He did bomb at that place. My father was one of his uh, best men. You know, he had many wives. Um, my father saved Amin's life many times, and he killed my father. So. That is something I cannot... People have been asking me whether I have forgiven. Um, it's very difficult for me to, to forgive. I think, uh, as I said uh, a while ago, it's the most barbaric act in modern time. And I will never forget. But life goes on. I don't know. It's you know. It's difficult. It's, it's difficult. Um, I, d I don't know. That he had many sons. I think. Um, I used to know. I met once or twice uh, Taban, who was in the army. Uh, uh, that was way back, just a few months before I left. And yeah, it's it's difficult. It's difficult because um, he had a state funeral uh, thanks to. President Museveni, and I was not able to come, uh, but all the family in the diaspora, they they went to... Was there? Yes, oh, yeah. Uh, Museveni was there himself, yeah. And uh, they had to open the, the coffin, and it was terrible, the way he was tortured. Um, and it's, it's difficult to for, forgive and to forget. In 2005, I composed a song in the form of a letter, which I addressed to Joseph Cohn. And I had death threats because of that song. And I defend uh, the cause in 2010, I was approached by the United Nations uh, because there was a film, a 90-minute documentary film, presented 
by a journalist who actually lived in Anapa and he knew Joseph Ford very well. So he presented that film at the United Nations and I was invited uh, to perform. Um, last year, I was invited to by uh, Honorable Sam Kutesa because they launched a campaign, an international campaign against the use of children in, con in conflict. And so I've been involved in that cause for, for the last six years. And, and that's why there's another song I, I'm speaking, addressing. It's a message directed to the Acholis. I say, if you want to really fight, I think this country is rich enough. Uganda's economy is based on agriculture. I say, put down your guns, pick up holes, and fight with the soil. That's, you know, the more pacific move, more positive move. Um, yeah, so I will be playing that song tomorrow. And uh, I'm not accusing Joseph Cohen, but I want to know why kids of four, five, six years are not in school. Instead, they have Kalashnikov. Um, those kids are adults now. And they have no future. And that is sad. Well, world music has no... Um, it's, it's a, this is a term I've been discussing with Peter Gabriel for, for the last over 20 years. He agrees with me. I mean, it has no meaning in this world where we live, which is like a platform, uh, there's all, all kinds of, all kinds of uh, music, jazz, uh, pop, rock. Um, so uh, that term really does not mean anything to me, world music. Um, it's like saying African music, you know, or oh, it's like saying European music. It's, um, it's true that my kind of style, people have always found it very difficult to classify, very, um, from day one when album Exile was released, uh, sometimes in the record shops it would be uh, classified in the world music category, sometimes in the Afropop. Um, <laughs> so, um, I think the next, the last, I don't know whether you, you've heard the last album which was released in 2012 uh, from the heart from it's the called it will be uh, it will be on sale tomorrow yeah um, it sounds different it's more people say it's more uh, I don't know there's more of a rock thing into it and and even the next one is even more but I still uh, keep the Jeffrey Oriema identity, you know. Oh, what a, thank you, thank you. In fact, those are one of my, two of my, my favorites. Nam not enough, obviously, is where my father was born, my great-grandfather, and that is where he is now resting. My mom is there as well, resting beside him. Um, when the Bayimba uh, festival is over, I will go up north with the guitar uh, to Anaha, of course. Um, in fact, that song talks about uh, Obiga is in a choli, it's like a pillar. When the pillar of the house breaks, the whole house just comes down um, so that that was a tribute to to my late dad and brother john is um 
a tribute to my brother, actually, who's, who died. He died here in Kampala uh, at 40 of meningitis. Yeah. What was that? Uh, meningitis. When was that? Um, 1989. Oh. 1989. Um, I composed that song in 10 minutes. It just, it just came to my mind. Music and lyrics. We'll be playing both songs tomorrow. That's a style which I I've been working on for over 20 years now. Um, unlike, but when I compose, um, when I play the guitar, I want the guitar to cry. You know, the, it must cry. If it doesn't cry, then, you know, it doesn't go straight to the heart. And there is one song, um, and there's only one person on this earth who can play that. Uh, it's on the beat the border, um, La Pointe. You know, I, I slap the guitar, boom, boom, boom. Um, that is my signature, really. Um, and I must thank the, my team. Uh, you see them very talented, very, very talented. I have a very weak guitarist. Um, keyboard player who was who was here a minute ago, and uh, Zeno is uh, is from uh, originally from the Congo, but he left when he was 13. He's based in Brussels. Um, yeah, and they both they, they both feed me with new, fresh 